Peace, 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 y'all. Once again, I apologize. We have difficulties. Um, made a long story short, it was difficulties. And um, having little problems this week dealing with the camera and doing some video. So that's why a lot of the video is basically um, cutting off way before it's time. So, I'm Chocolate Lemon Ron. This is uh, part three of two. Because you finished before it's time. So what I want you to do to understand is this here. I showed you the Egyptian literature, but I also want to show you that remember I told you, you gotta contrast things, you gotta you gotta make sure you get these different books. And I'm showing you the books you need to get. The Stolen Legacy. The Egyptian Stolen Legacy. Right? By George G. M. James. Then you get the African Origin Civilization, the Myth and Reality. Understand something. There are many different books here, as you can tell. You need to get that book right there called The Kodak Game Is Over by Shaka Atmos. But anyway, let's get into Brother Cyrus Suit and Seti. Uh, they conquered by they conquered by religion, the rape of African spirituality. Let's just get right into it. But before we do, we all must pay due respects. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Armu. Let's get right into here. Let's get to work. Let Seti do his thing. I think it might be Cali. Okay. Now you see the line right there now. See, that's the symbolisms of best. You got to understand that's best. How did it get in India? How did it get into India? We took it there. So how can he say Asia bar anything into Africa when we can clearly show we took it there? Now Acts 7, 22, and it says, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. I don't even know why I even got to go further with that. Damn, then he wrote, he supposedly wrote the first book of the Bible. Genesis, even though we know it's a lie, Let's go along with the lie for a minute. He wrote it. Okay, then. Where did he get his education from? Egypt. They didn't have no damn books before they went into Egypt. Just show it to me. Oh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Don't want to talk no more. Tired. <laughs> Don't want to talk no more. I want to see original documentation. Can't show it to me? I don't want to hear no, no more from you. Okay, now that right there shows you that the, uh, the Hebrews was in Egypt for 430 years. How long have we been in America? We thoroughly Americanized. We, I mean, we living like crackers from top to bottom. We know it. A lot of us are fighting against it, but we know we living like peckerwoods. So for them to have been in Egypt for 430 years, we know that they took something with them when they left. What did they take with them? And the Hebrew ain't going to say nothing because he knows they already living in a glass house. And if they just throw one pebble, it's going to come crashing in. So they ain't going to say nothing. They ain't going to say nothing came out of Egypt. They ain't going to say nothing came out because they know what's going to happen. Now, look at this. Now, this is the white man's uh, chronology. Hail born 240, 2440 BCE. Shem 2, 2441. Cush 2342. Now, we know, according to the Bible, Ham is supposed to be the father of Egypt. Now, the damn pyramid is at 2550 BCE. 
before Ham, before Shem, before Cush, and when you look at the pyramid, you got to understand it's about two, three hundred thousand years of, the, of development to get to that point. And we talking about Ham, Shem, all that garbage, garbage. When you start with the Bible, you starting at the end of the damn book. You starting at the end of the book and not making it clear that we have millions of years of documenting history before that. Now, this is the Nubians coming up out of Nubia. And what I'm trying to show you is, is that the gold that went into all the masses, all that gold that they found down in them tombs in ancient Kemi, it was the Nubians that was carving all that gold. That's where the gold mines was. And when you, the, the word Nubian means the golden race. It means the golden race. And Genesis 2.12, it states, and the name of the first is Pison, that which conquered the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. Where there is gold. So when you look at this map right here, you see Havilah down here. Here's Cush, which is number two. If you read it, uh, number three was Assyria, which is the land of Nimrod, which is a Cushite, not a Semitic. I'm not saying that I agree with it. I'm just going along with the Bible. I'm going to just use their own book against them. That's all I'm saying. So for him to say that the Semitics, the Arabs, the Arabs are Semitics. They come from Ishma. The Hebrews supposedly come from Isaac. They are Abrahamic religions. They descend from Abraham. If you take it out of that context, you got bootleg Islam. That's what you got. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I know you put a black coat over it. It's still niggified Islam. And this is a picture of our brothers, the Nubians, that were building a lot of the pyramid structures before it went into Kemet. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. But a lot of people talk about they build pyramids. That's a damn lie. Geometrically, a pyramid come to a point. Now, everything else is stacked master bars. The, the, the original uh, tomb of the early uh, pharaohs was a master bar. I'm going to show you. It's a single story, oblong structure. And Imhotep stacked them. And I can show you the development right there in Africa. Right here, it shows you the gold deposits that the Egyptians had to use. That uh, The granite came from right here at Aswan. They had to float the granite down to Giza. If, that, if it came from outside of Africa, you're going to have to show me where they was de dealing with all of this technology before they came into Africa. Because you just ain't coming to Africa and learn it all on your own. You ain't did nothing like that. It was already in Africa. The man around the gold had been dealing with the gold a lot longer than everybody else. That's why his cuts on the gold was much better. The brothers down here that lived in Nubia that was dealing with the granite, they was cutting it much better because it's right there in their environment. You're not going to do better than me, and it's right here in my house. I don't care what you say. You're not coming in my house doing better than me. And here again, it shows Ham, according to the Bible, was in control of the area that you call Mecca and Medina today. What no area. Brothers, sisters, remember I used to tell y'all, don't throw your Bibles away? Clear. You don't throw your Bibles away. The reason why you don't throw your Bibles away is because you can use it. I told you. Don't throw your Bibles away because it's unnecessary. You can use your Bibles as a reference, for answers, as the, the, the powerful scholar Cyrus Sutton said it says he doesn't agree with the Bible but he's going to use it you don't throw it away it's a waste of time doing it because it has answers the Bible is you it's talking about you okay you got European names Mark, Luke, Matthews, John so and so, so and so forth but all that is copyrighted it's been copied when you understand when you understand and do your research and find out all these things was copied already from the Africans. 
but it was already it was already done. The problem is we've been here in South and North, South and North America for so long. We've been here so long. We only living by the system of things that controls the whitewash system of things. Understand this faculty. Nobody's being racist, bigot. Who's in power? Are you? Are we? White folks in power in Africa. You don't think so, huh? You can't walk in South Africa and think the Africans is running that. Nah. South Africa's not run by pure blooded Africans. It's not. If you don't know that, something wrong with you. You got a lot of parts in Africa that the Arabs is running it. This is why they're trying to destroy all this evidence now. They're trying to destroy it. About another 50, 100 years, they'll sit there and say, we running this whole thing. Oh, let's don't forget. You got Chinese China. That's in Africa. Right now. Who are we fooling? China is in Africa. They've got an army in Africa. Because remember, you can't dominate nothing if you ain't got an army. You can talk all you want. Without an army backing you up, you cannot conquer or dominate nothing. All the evidence is when you get the books, you go to these museums and you cross-reference, they're right there. Knowing thyself, knowing your descendant, knowing there's a possibility where you come from. Regardless if you come here from, if your descendant come here in South and North America, how do they travel here? How do they travel here? We can't even stop here if we wanted to. So let's get back into it. Cyrus Hutton said he, the great powerful scholar, as he continued breaking this down. Let's get to work. Over there, according to the Bible. Now, I might get them in, you know, they might get the beefing after this. You understand what I'm saying? They might get the beef. And it says right here, according to the Bible, and, C and Cush beget, begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akai, Kalni, and in the land of Shinar, which is Sumeria. So it shows that the Kushites took the knowledge there. They did not bring no knowledge into Africa. And keep it clear, I don't believe this, but I'm using their story because this is what their story said. And again, we see it right here where the Hermetics are in control of that area where Mecca and Medina is today. So if they're so ancient, where was they at at this time? There's no Mecca and Medina there. They don't exist. Now I'm about to go into uh, my uncle right here. He was able to get this Bible. It comes out of Ghana. It comes from Ghana. It was a missionary's Bible. And one of the brothers was able to get it over to the United States. It had a help to the Bible, uh, like a dictionary. And this is what it says about the Semitic language. Now, you know who's doing this commentary? Budge. Wallace Budge. He's in a, a King James version of the Bible with commentary. And who gave him the funds to do it? The Rothschilds. So don't come here talking about no damn King James. No damn homosexual fag white boy named King James. Running around filling on little boys and these niggas talking about that that Bible holds. How it gonna be holding? You got a fag on the cover of it. Listen to what it says. I'm gonna run through this. The principal languages through which the Holy Scriptures have been transmitted to us are Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. It is therefore of interest to know the origin of the alphabets in which those tongues were written and the history of their development. The identification of their common origin is of quite recent date. 
it was not difficult to connect the Greek alphabet with the alphabet which is usually called Phoenician, but to which is perhaps better to give the wider name of Semitic. The forms of letters and still more, their names and order conclusively prove the relationship. But to prove the descent of the Semitic alphabet from the Egyptian was a long and difficult task. In our shape, the Semitic letters are all of, uh, are to all appearance quite different from the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Their names are different. Their order is different. These difficulties cause scholars to reject the ancient tradition handed down by Greek and Roman writers that the Semites had originally obtained their, le their letters in Egypt. The tradition has, however, proved correct. In 1859, the French Egyptologist, De Roche, published the result of his study of an ancient cursive form of Egyptian writing, a form to which the name of Horatic or writing of the priest has been given, and showed beyond reasonable doubt that it is the connecting link between the Egyptian and the Semitic alphabet. The most important document of which was made use was the Prissy Papyrus, the date of which is conjectured to be about 2500 BCE. Let me deal with this. The Semitic Semites adopted two and twenty of the Egyptian alphabetical signs, and there can be little doubt that this formation of a new alphabet took place during the per period of the Semitic conquest and the occupation of the Delta. The Hiscos. Here it is. So what the nigga talking about? They already know that the Semites took their letters from the Egyptians. So how can he say that the Sumerians, the Arabians, brought knowledge into Egypt when we got the damn documentation that it was vice versa, it was the other way around? We got the documentation. If they had writing before us, show us the writings. That's all you got to do. In the, com in, in the argument, can't do it. Again, this is showing you a timeline. And you can always go back on your TV and pause this and do the research. Right here at the end, it says, Canon of Hebrew Bible, 70 AD. People keep talking about this book is old. It is not ancient, as you like to think. They just really put this book together. Tell them this, again, I'm gonna, if it's older than 70 AD, please show it. Please show it. I got a few, but I need you to show me this. Show the world, end the dispute. You won't do it, because you ain't got it. Again, right here, this particular one, this all crack of information. But it says, Torah, according to tradition, in final form, 444, I mean, yeah, 444 BCE. We got papyrus as old as 6,000 BCE. So how can they bring anything into Egypt? And they don't even have a canon until about 400 some BCE. Pyramids are already 3,000 years old and they just getting a book. How you think they built the damn pyramid? They had to have writing. When you start building them buildings downtown, you need schematics. When you look at that pyramid, the one thing we got over everybody is that pyramid. Because there's so much knowledge that went into it, you know that they had to have to build it, nothing that they could say. No group, no religion has that. That's why they try to co-opt Egypt because it's just too all-powerful. And any man that got, what's that, my brother? No, ain't no Islam. Ain't no Islam to Muhammad. We know that. Ain't no Islam to Muhammad. Y'all going back up under the water, where you come from. The Jewish encyclopedia state, those who regard the Joseph stories as historically generally holds that the pharaoh by whom Joseph was made the practical ruler of Egypt was one of the Hyksos kings. He was an Asian that had came in and conquered our people. Ain't no black man put no Arab or no low-life Jew on, in the second position and kill it. Get out of here. It's just a fairy tale. All of the kings of ancient Egypt got a name. What pharaoh? Can anybody give me that? Any Hebrew Israelites like to give me that? Anywhere? Anytime? He don't exist. You believe in fairy tales. 
And this is, this comes off the walls of ancient Kemet. This is drawing, but I got the original right behind. It clearly shows them as the low life Arab that's in your store right now. Same one. They were not uh, uh, ignorant of these people and where they come from. So here's the original, since you need to see the original. I bring originals. So that's the, uh, t uh, the temple of Kanun Hotel. So if you're ever in Kemet and you just got to see it for yourself, go to the temple of Kanun Hotel. Now this is showing you, just like we said, that the Semitic got their letters from ancient Kemet. This is the Horatic. This is the priestly script. And you can see right here where they took it. It's a deviation from the original. And you see how they got them red letters in there? And then you go in the Bible, and the letters, the words of Jesus is in red. This is where they got it from. You can even go in the Quran and they got red letters. Documented fact. Deal with it. Deal with it. Again, Papyrus, 600 BCE. We know it don't belong to uh, Edwin Smith. He's the cracker that bought it, stole it, from a little low life Arab, Muslim. They were the ones selling all them damn papyrus because the white man didn't even know where they was. Uh, King Tut's tomb, an Arab show up, well, a Nubian, Arab. The nigga forgot he was African. He's dark, but as soon as the crackers gave him a little dollar or two, he went right over there and pointed that damn tomb out. That's how they found that tomb. Islam, under Islam. Here's another manuscript. It's original. If I put an original up there, you put an original up there. Don't bring me no damn carbon copy. Now this, this one is at 15 BCE. Anybody got a uh, Torah right at home? Quran? Message of the black man? 101? Do you got one at all? If you don't, then what is you talking about? It's still your history. You're still a black man. Why are you fighting it? Might be getting a couple of dollars off of it. Why are you fighting it? Still your history. Getting a couple of dollars, that's all. Tell it like it is. Now, now this is a manuscript. Now, if you want to look this up, it's called the Skoe Collection. He's a Jew. They didn't, they didn't basically gather up all the old ancient manuscripts. And this is one of the largest co collections, I guess, in the world of ancient manuscripts. Now, this is uh, Joseph. I'm going to have to get up on this. Uh, late second century of the Common Era, the oldest manuscript of this part of the Bible, Joseph. Where did it come from? Egypt. It's showing you that the papyrus, they was writing on papyrus, the earliest Bible. They were not writing them in the, in the book. You need to see that because you can see how they take it from the Pur M. Hey Ru. You see, if you see, you put the Pur M. Her Ru next to this, you can see how they're taken slowly but surely, developing it into what it is today. They was originally writing those, uh, those books on scroll. Here's another one. This one right here is Matthew. In Egypt, first half of the fourth century of the common era. Eight, eight chapters are the uh, earliest known of this part of the Bible. I'm showing you this because they was writing on papyrus. This shows you that they got their education in Africa because papyrus is an indigenous African plant. You got to understand that. Again, uh, Leviticus, Egypt, late uh, second century. Uh, oldest manuscript of Jonah and first P uh, Peter, Egypt, third century of the common era. Now, let's get on the Mesopotamians. Let's, let's beat them up right quick. They didn't have manuscripts. You know what a manuscript is? Anybody know what a manuscript is? You got to have paper. You ain't got paper, you ain't got no manuscript. See, the Mesopotamians built with mud. They, they, they chiseled their little writings on clay. They never used paper. And Walter Williams believed they made that up. I ain't gonna argue with him. I ain't gonna argue with him, but what we're showing is that if they brought knowledge into Egypt, what was they writing on? How did they develop papyrus? You have to show the development. How do they get from this clay cookie to papyrus? They can't show that. They wrote on rock. The, the ancient Nile Valley Africans carved in stone, but they developed first with the pyramid text, right? 
Then they went to the coffin text, where they just wrote it inside of the coffin. You understand? And then they went into the pack. Y'all, class is over. First of all, I want to apologize for a lot of the clips being cut off short. I had some difficulties, but still putting that work. But what I want to do is address a few things. One, why are you afraid of your own culture? Two, each culture comes from and got the information through Africa, through Egypt, as it was explained clearly, right? Okay. Even though we are Americanized, and even though a lot of you got jobs and you're getting that good money, it's nothing wrong knowing your heritage. You are a black man, a black woman. You are a god, a goddess on earth. What's wrong with that? Why are you having a hard time trying to understand this? Remember I told you, get your books. The African Origin Civilization. These books. The Stolen Legacy, the Egyptian Origin of the Western Philosophy. And remember, I told you the Egyptian Legacy? Get those books, volume one, two, and three. Get those books. I understand, even though I have this book written. By the Elijah, the, the, by the, by the Elijah Muhammad. But I read this book because it deals with us black men. I'm not worried about its origin. I'm worried about now, as a black man, as a black god. See, I don't get caught up in all the semestics of. Who did this and what did what? Nah. Once you understand its origin and understand where it comes from, okay then. We got this information. But now we need to start learning and understanding here and other great leaders. Should I read The Destruction of, of the Black Civilization by Channel Counselor? Williams, excuse me, Councilor Williams. I mind you, when you read this book, you will get your mind rocked. Another book you should get by Dr. Welsing, Chris Welsing, The ISIS Papers. Yes, The ISIS Papers. I'll get that for you right now. Just hold on. Okay? I'll get that book right now. The ISIS Papers, Dr. Francis Cress Wellington. Y'all know who she is, come on. You can know all these theologies, all these philosophies, but as a melanated race here in South and North America, what are we doing to uplift our people? pinpoint the finger, get mad at each other, stressing each other out about a bunch of madness. Whose institution is better than whose? Does that make sense? You got some powerful institutions. The Hebrew Israelites. The House of Consciousness. 
Islamic, Christians, and the Moors. These are powerful institutions. But when we start saying one is better than the other, this is where we got problems. But when you start doing your research, and you start to see where all this really, this information comes from, it's a whole different story. This is why I don't try to get into tactics, tactics and debates with people. I mean, there's people debating me on Facebook. And they so institutionalize them. Oh, your way is the devil's way. Sounds European to me. But brothers and sisters, next week, we're going to go back into this. The conquer. We ain't finished yet, but we're going to complete it next week. Well, not really complete, but going to his second value. The conquering of religion, the rape of African spirituality. Peace.